As we approach the end of Pesach in 2016, we're talking about next year in Jerusalem. And then I'm thinking, what does that mean? I'll, I'll be there in a couple of months. So I think it'll be this year in Jerusalem for me. For the past six months, Israel's been struck by a wave of Palestinian terror like never before. Palestinian assailants have stabbed, shot, maimed civilians and security personnel across Israel on an almost daily basis. Total have been 134 stabbings, 44 shootings and 27 ramming raids. In cities like Tel Aviv, Jerusalem, Beersheba and Netanyi, life's not been the same. Some people have called it the third intifada. Jerusalem's a colourful place, full of Jews, Muslims, Christians, tourists from all over the world. People like me have been there drinking coffee with family and friends. However, in the last six months, Palestinian terrorists have attempted to tear apart the unique fabric of life here in Jerusalem. And there have been 50 attacks in Jerusalem, but 11 of them at Damascus Gate. That's a place where I pass through myself. Will I ever feel as a community member safe to walk these streets again? Gush Etzion used to be a real bustling hub of Israeli and Palestinian coexistence. Now it's, it's turned into a focal point of, of terror. Hamas and other terror organizations are taking advantage of the unrest. The stench of their ideology is repugnant to me. They've equipped themselves with weapons that have attempted to establish cells, but the Israel Defense Forces have been out there discovering, stopping and arresting the, the, the terrorists. In an extension to this year's Passover story, Jews across the world experience more pain as the boycott divestment campaign cuts deep into Israeli economy and into the world's psyche. Some European governments are now taking action against aspects of Israel's occupation, and several US academic associations have endorsed a comprehensive academic boycott of Israeli universities and many prominent musicians and artists support the cultural boycott of Israel, refusing to perform there. Israeli business leaders and politicians are warning that the boycott is starting to isolate Israel. In fact, the government is so worried about the strategic threat that BDS poses to their regime of oppression that it's using its enormous resources to undermine the movement. There's a real fear within Israel that it is fast becoming the pariah state that South Africa once was. And that's just the gentle propaganda. Over in America, the democratic race is heating up and it's Clinton versus Sanders. Sanders the Jew. Let's hear what he has to say about Israel, shall we? Israel was subjected to terrorist attacks, has every right in the world to destroy terrorism. But we had in the Gaza area, not a very large area, some 10,000 civilians who were wounded and some 1,500 who were killed. There it is, free Palestine. Hope you're proud of that, Bernie. It's a kind of self-inflicted chain, this, this Palestinian movement. If only they would grant themselves peace and the Israelis would gladly join hands. But sadly, only Clinton seems in this race to be able to see the pain and angst of the Israeli government. They do not seek this kind of attacks. They do not invite rockets raining down on their towns and villages. They do not believe that there should be a constant incitement by Hamas, aided and abetted by Iran, against Israel. So what chances are there for peace in Israel from the Israeli perspective? There are, of course, the extremists to the right that live in the West Bank, in so-called settlements. And I found this particular piece really fascinating. Can you explain to us what these price tag attacks are, what they mean? After Arabs killed Jews and anything wrong that happened, uh, we showed that we won't um, stay in quiet. It has a price, and it's called price, price tag. And it could just be any, any random Arab, doesn't matter whether they were involved or not? No, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Because they sit here, and because they believe it's theirs. And they're for, all involved. And for you, that's guilty enough, just, just being here. That yes. makes them guilty, yeah. Yeah, that makes them guilty. Mm -hmm. You really feel the strength of belief that this is the Jewish homeland, not the Arabs. It's 
to be Kent is milling about in front of the soldiers, uh, firing slingshots, and then uh, one basically dropped to the ground and then uh, got taken away in an ambulance straight away. Yeah, that's a wall, a wall between Jews and Arabs to stop the Palestinian terrorists from killing us. And yes, we're protecting borders. Many countries now across the world want to protect their borders too. It's not an exclusive problem, but it is an exceptional one. When will Jews and Arabs be able to walk the streets together peacefully? Here they are in New York in a social experiment walking through a Jewish neighborhood. We see a lot of cars stopping, like, oh my god, they're together. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> this is the opposite of the TV. The TV shows hate and the dance. This is pure love, man. Yeah, Forget about yeah. the whole what no, we believe in. Guys, really Thank you, I appreciate it, brother. Really respect us. Appreciate it. Uh, it's a weird thing that you see a Jewish man and a Muslim man walking together. First time ever. First wow. Time ever. The, the Quran does not tell you to kill. And I know that. No, I, no it does absolutely not. The interpretation does that. Whoever interpreted it. Look. So what do, you, what do you think about us being together? I think it's like the greatest thing, man. You think so? Yeah. Absolutely, man. Thank you, man. I appreciate it, man. I really do. You're, you guys... Of course, man. I, 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 I let it walk by me and I'm like... That's not really just like great. Yeah. yeah. And then I, I, I kept on walking and I said... Man, you gotta go talk to these guys. Yeah, no, definitely, yeah. of course. I appreciate that, man. I'll put my email right here. But it's the Arab area of New York which gives us the most poignant remark. Chef, we never make peace. Well, you're right. You're right. You're right. Who said we never Ask make you. peace? Ah, brother and, and a cousin. I'm gonna send it to my mother. Can you take me a picture with him? Yeah. yeah. I gotta be in the middle. Oh, I should have my cowboy hat. I'm gonna send it to Algeria. I'm from Algeria, by the way. Oh, wow. Jazeera. One brother, one cousin. We come from the same father, Abraham. Of course. Ali Salam. Appreciate Put it. Put on uh, YouTube. Make sure. Yeah, of course. My ex-wife will see you too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.